Hey guys, and welcome to another MLDO Compositions tutorial. Now, um, this is the fifth tutorial in the first steps and preparation series. And as always, I'm first of all going to show you a few things I forgot to mention last time. Now, um, let's just open up a new window of Blender. And now let's just delete this cube and add a monkey. Now let's um, go to side view, orthographic, rotate it a little bit, go to edit mode, and now I'm going to show you a few things. So first of all, let's talk about this menu bar. Because it is quite similar to the one in object mode, it only has a few changes. This button still does the exact same thing as always. Um, those menus are named in the same way, but they have a few different context sensitive options. So let's not worry about those just now. So let's um, make it hide it. Same thing as before. Same thing as before. Of course, even if you go to textured, for example, it looks different than from um, object mode because you can still uh, manipulate all the vertices. Oh, and by the way, if you go to bounding box, you can see nothing happens, it just turns to um, transparent as if you'd use the uh, C option, as if you go to wireframe. Because um, in edit mode, making a bounding box out of this monkey is absolutely uh, useless. Okay, so Same thing as always, just that here it's got a few um, different... It, it's, it's, it's a bit different. Okay, now with um, active element, Always the vertex selected last is the um, is where the selection actually is. If you go to median point, it just uses like a center kind of thing. Same thing as in object mode. If you go to individual origins, I think nothing nothing happened. Let's just see. No, nothing will happen because um, there are there are no origins in here. The only origin we have is down here. So individual origins does not work in edit mode. Then 3D cursor, same thing as always, and bounding box center. Let's just see if there's a difference between this one and this one. Yes, there is. So bounding box center once again. Think like there's a box around all this, and the center of that box is your selection. Cool. Now, exact same thing over here as it is in uh, object mode, and you can also just choose any kind of orientation of your uh, widget, for example, local, if you want to um, manipulate it in a, in the, with the local coordinates. And you could also just go into object mode, use the local coordinates of another um, mesh or object to make your custom transform orientations. Then you could go back into edit mode and uh, manipulate those vertices according to those coordinates. Pretty cool. Th pretty cool stuff. So let's just hide it once again, the properties panel. And now we've got those um, options over here and they're pretty important. Right now we are in vertex select mode. Okay, so whenever we click somewhere, we select vertices. Now if you go to edge select mode, you can actually select edges. And if you go to face select mode, you can actually select faces. Okay. And once again, to remind you, if you're in edge select mode and you Alt click somewhere on those lines, you can see it selects an edge loop. Now if you go to the edge mode and you do the same thing, it also selects an edge loop. However, if you go to face select mode, you can now see those dots um, implying that there is a face. And now if you cont Alt click on one of those faces, nothing happens with Alt click. You have to alt click on one of those lines, and now you can see those are edge loops. Uh, I'm sorry, those are face loops. And that's actually one of the things I forgot to mention in the last tutorial. Face loops are quite important and quite cool. And this is also one of the reasons why you should avoid using triangles, because as you can see, no, you cannot see it, but if, for example, like I use alt select over here, you can see the triangle is not included. You cannot um, select a face loop or an edge loop with triangles. Now the edge loop works over here, but it does not pass through this center point where, where several triangles meet. And therefore, if you want a clean geometry, you need to work with quads. Okay, now another option. If we go to set, 
you can see we're now in wireframe and now we can see all the vertices even those that are behind the object however let's go back to vertex mode if select mode if i go to front view for example it looks like this and if i go to control one to back view it looks the exact same so it's pretty hard to tell what is in the front what's in the back now in order to avoid that you can just use this button instead of uh, now it is gone you've got to you you have to go to solid view once again and now you can just use this button as you can see uh, the vertices that are in the back are now also displayed but in a light gray instead of a pitch black and this is very handy because now you can see what is behind the object and you can still see the difference between front vertex and back vertex so to say um, okay now proportional editing um, basically the same thing as in object mode you select something and you scale it up okay and as you can see with the uh, fall off radius everything close to it is also affected um, less strongly the further away it is you can also scale things in of course and then let's just um, scale the nose up a little bit and with scrolling on your mouse wheel as always you can um, change the um, affected area and now you could you might have noticed there is also this connected now what that does it actually doesn't just I'm just gonna show you let's actually go to top view now let's just read a little bit now let's just move this ear piece over here now we are in proportional editing now if we scale this up you can see everything is affected as we're used to but if I go to connect it you can see the rest of the face is no longer affected as strongly because now the fall off radius cannot affect anything that is not connected so the fall off radius has to go this way and therefore the cheek over here is only affected in a very slight way okay this is a bit hard to explain but if you play around with it you'll get the hang of it in no time and yeah by the way with O you can go to proportional editing alt O connected and once again alt O you're back to you're back out of edit mode uh, of proportional editing mode now the snap options this is the exact same thing as in um, object mode actually you select something and you can move it according to the grid if you go to top view you can actually move it a bit more um, in smaller increments and it's actually quite, quite funny to know that the closer you go um, the more accurate your positioning is if you go even closer you can see now this is the closest you can get okay and now also very funny is the uh, vertex snap ele snap element and vertex. Now you can actually take this and go to boom and boom. And as you can see, it automatically um, chooses one of the vertices you've selected to snap to this element, to snap to this vertex in this case. Pretty cool. And, and don't forget, if you want to make this connect or snap to this vertex, it is not going to work if you just move it over here you have to make sure that your mouse hovers over the vertex and the in in order to change that you can you have a, a couple of options over here for example you can now shift select this vertex so this is the last one you selected now you can go to active and now if you go to you can see always the active one um, is positioned where your uh, mouse is or the center now it will just move the whole geometry until the center is where your where, where the vertex is or median I don't really see the difference anyway you can also go to edge of course now that you can position it along this edge also pretty cool or um, volume or face and I can position somewhere on this face or you know um, where is it volume now it just is just somewhere in this volume it is kind of creepy and hard to control but here you go and here once again your open GL and open GL render animation buttons 
cool. And now we're through with that. Now, one other thing I'd like to show you is how to use the um, screw modifier some more. Um, I only gave you a brief explanation of the um, screw modifier. Let's just delete everything. And I didn't make myself very, cl very clear last time I noticed. So let's once again go to front view. And actually let's do one other thing first. Let's go to edit mode, uh, to object mode. Shift A, A plane. Now let's rotate this around the x-axis for 90 degrees. Perfect. And you can notice that right now this value here changed. Now we could go ahead to the control A and apply the rotation. It would once again be zero. But for now, let's just leave it. I want to point something out. Now let's go to edit mode, to front view. Let's scale those two together. Okay. Let's move everything over here. And now in order to make um, use the screw modifier, you can see we need an unconnected or a string of connected vertices. But they are not allowed to form a face or be connected in like this fashion. They have to be open somewhere. So let's just once again duplicate this. Move it over here. Now let's, let's just scale it up a little bit. Okay. Now let's select everything and hit the screw function. And you can see, whoa, it goes upwards. Why is that? Let's hit Control Z. Let's go to object mode. And now we just have to apply this rotation because it will rotate, it'll use the screw modifier according to how, to those values over here, basically. So let's just hit Control A, rotation. Let's go back into edit mode, select everything and use the screw modifier. And you can see as we, as it was before. And as you can see, because this line in here, this one is longer than this one over here. Um, there's a gap in between. And you can see, we've, we could make, for example, a stair or something like that with the, with this modifier or something. Pretty cool. However, if you want to make a screw, as we tried to last time, we need to consider one other thing, and I did not do that last time. Okay, so let's go to front view. Let's hit Control Z, and now we're once again back here. And if you want to make a screw, you cannot have this additional edge in here. Uh, because if you have this edge, it will make a um, number of faces inside the screw and you don't want any faces inside the screw. So let's just delete this one. We don't need it anymore. And now let's delete this edge like this. And now because this is already a string of connected vertices, we no longer have to worry about making an additional one. So let's just select this thing and let's go to screw. And you can see it automatically makes it um, exactly the way we want it and while making sure that those vertices ex overlap exactly. So now let's um, turn this up to let's say 10. And now one other thing, those vertices are not connected as opposed to those over here. Now in order to change that we have to select everything and now mm, use this um, button over here, remove doubles. And now you can see up here, 82 vertices removed. And now you can see they are connected. So therefore, remove doubles is a very handy tool because you don't want any doubles, basically never. So whenever you have some issues with rendering or shading issues, the first thing you could check, as I said before, is whether there are any unnecessary faces in weird positions or inside the mesh. Second thing, do you have any doubles? If you don't know, just select everything and hit remove doubles and your problem is possibly solved. Okay, now let's let's just um, delete it with this button over here. Um, pretty self-explaining. Same thing as in object mode. You hit a few vertices, you click delete, and yeah, I showed you that a numerous times. Just hit delete and you can see this context menu. Uh, next thing is merge. Now this works a little bit differently from object mode. In object mode you merge two objects, but nothing is deleted, you know? You just have two objects, and after it's just one with one origin. Now here it's differently if you have two objects, uh, two vertices, and you merge them with Alt-M, by the way. You can see it is those options. 
And if you go to center, they merge in the center. If you go to all them collapse cursor, then they will merge where the cursor is. If you go to alt um, um, collapse, it is kind of similar to center. I'm not really sure what the difference is. If you go to alt um, last, we go to the uh, vertex selected last. If you go to alt m um, first, and so on. Now remove doubles. We just covered that. And now normals recalculate and flip direction. Um, I think I told you what normals are. I tried to illustrate it with, with the grease pencil and drawing this ugly arrow with the uh, right angle symbol. Now, those are also important for shading options, okay? If you if you apply a material to, for example, for example, to this screw, it will be displayed according to its normals. So if the normals l would look to the to the inside like this, um, like this on this face here you could get quite a few shading issues um, yeah so if you have those issues the third thing you could do is just check whether every all the normals are in the right um, phase into the right direction and therefore let's just go tap back into edit mode and now we have to do a few things that we did not yet cover in the properties panel I'm just going sh gonna show you that real quick, um, but we're going to we're going more in depth into those things later. Okay, now in order to display the normals, just go here in the properties panel to normals and select face in our case, and you can see all the normals um, point upwards. They point out of the face. They don't po they don't point inwards. Um, let me just take look at something oh great this is a great exercise you can actually see um, the normals on those uh, faces point inwards okay now if we go back into object mode if you go to zero and let's just position our camera a bit differently um, let's just turn off the snapping option Let's just go back a little bit. And now let's go to render, render. Oh, actually we have to set up a light or light source a little bit differently. Um, let's just move it over, let's say over here, zero. Okay, now um, let's just make a short render of this to show you what the problem is with, with those normals. Now, right now it wouldn't be, it wouldn't give you any issues at all, but if you go to smooth, you can see this weird thing going on here, and that's not what you want. So if right now we render this, you can see this looks just very, very weird. Um, although there's a light source over here, it doesn't really shade it properly. So in order to change that, let's go into edit mode, select everything, and go to recalculate. And now you can see this issue disappeared. So now if you go to zero and render this, it looks more or less how it's supposed to look, but not quite. We got a few other issues over here. I'm not sure why that is actually. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be. We removed doubles already. We don't have any additional faces. Let's also throw a subdivision surface in here. Okay, um, it was it wasn't really a, a problem. It was just that there weren't enough um, vertices, so it made a few shading issues and so on. But more on those things later. Now, um, the next thing is this flip direction. Okay, um, let's say you have all your vertices. And let's just imagine they would all point inwards, because if you calculate something, it could either look inward or outward, as long as they look in the same direction. So in order to flip, let's just go to flip direction. You can see now everything looks uh, faces the inside, outside again. Just a way of flipping the normals. Now let's just undisplay those normals under here, so we don't see them anymore because we don't want them right now. Now, um, those next few options are UV unwrapping. 
Now this is a bit difficult to explain um, and a bit difficult for you to grasp unless we have an actual um, example. Mm. Let me just try to show you, okay? So let's split our sub window here. And now let's just change this from 3D view to UV image editor, okay? This is the first time we actually um, changed one of the sub windows. Now, in order to UV unwrap it, we have to create a new a new image. So let's hit this plus button over here. Or actually, no, let's just uh, show this extra menu. Go to image, a new image. One, 1024, 1024 is okay. Check alpha, uh, leave everything else as it is and click okay. You can see we have a new, we have a new empty image, so to say. Now, um, by the way, we're going more in depth with uh, UV unwrapping in some other tutorial, but right now we're just going to take a look at the very basics. If you hit everything, you can see this turns white, and that is because right now you have the whole geometry over here is in some way represented over here. Now, if this empty image or this this image that has nothing on it would have a texture on it then right now we could actually see this texture projected onto um, this object according to where those vertices are over here, okay? So for example, if we select this face, you can see here it is. Now whatever is in here, whatever picture is in here, will show on this um, face here. And you could actually see that in your 3D viewport when going to textured. And that's actually why there is this textured option. However, since we do not have a texture in here, it doesn't show anything. So let's just go back to solid. Okay. Now, as you might guess, right now, every face is just represented here on top of each other. And you usually don't want that, okay? Um, what you rather want is, um, if you remember that head I just showed you before from that girl, um, and she has like a skin texture, okay? And now you want to make it so that the skin is mapped onto her head according to the vertices. So um, it is in the right place. Now, um, in order to do that, you have to unwrap it. okay? And you do that by hitting U on your keyboard. And now you can see quite a few unwrapping options. And another thing you have to do first down here is, by the way, unwrapping it, this is the same one, you could as well press U, and you can mark seam and clear seam. Now what those two things do, right now if you would unwrap it, actually let's just do that, let's hit U, unwrap, you can see it tried to somehow unwrap this onto this picture, but as you can see this isn't a very um, good way to unwrap it because those few faces make up most of the picture, and if you go down here, the majority of the faces um, can use barely any of the texture. So this is not something you want. So instead of doing this, you would need to find a way to um, distribute those faces over this um, texture here um, in a uh, more or less, how should I put it, in a, in a even way. So what we do, we mark one of those seams, for example, this one. Now you can just press mark seam. Okay, now you see the seam. Now if we unwrap it, Blender will know that this face does not have to be connected to this one, so it can actually cut it apart and then um, distribute all the, the faces across this texture. So let's just select everything. Let's hit U and unwrap. And you can see this is already a pretty clean unwrapping. <coughs> now, an even better way would probably be to try and get those vertices here to be the seam because it just looks more even, okay? So once again hit mark seam. And now let's also delete this seam with remove seam, clear seam. And now you can see it will be cut apart over here. And that should give us, give us a very even um, result. So you have to once again hit U and unwrap. And you can see this is just gorgeous. This is just amazing. And now what you do, you can actually, um, for example, well, let's do this 
let's do that real quick. You have to go to image, open image. Now let's just find our, let me see, Aston Martin. Let's go to, what picture to choose? Let's take, for example, this one. Perfect. Now let's um, select everything. Let's rotate it around uh, this axis for 90 degrees. Let's position it over this virage. Let's scale it up a little bit. Okay, and now over here, let's go to textured. And now you can actually see this Aston Martin texture is projected onto this um, this this uh, object. Now the lighting is rather unphenomenal, so let's just... Um, we didn't talk about lighting yet, did we? Yeah, let's just keep this point lamp, but let's just add a few more of them. Shift D to duplicate. Okay, now you can actually see headlights are over here um, and this um, grill thing, this air intake thing is over here and so on. And usually you don't want to project it onto something this way and usually you also don't project um, a car texture onto something, okay? Uh, when I made my car I did not project, use a texture, I actually um, made different materials. Anyway, I'm gonna show you all those things in a later tutorial. But anyway, this is what UV unwrapping is all about, and it's very important if you want to um, project a texture onto a object in a certain way. Cool. Now, in order to clear that up, we go, we, we have to go over here. And let's not worry about this too much just now, and let's just delete this over here. So now it's gone. Now let's just clear out this thing. Let's go back to solid and. We're once again back in our comfort zone. Edit mode. Okay. Now, next thing is smooth and flat. And now this is actually the exact same thing as this over here. However, um, in object mode, you only have two. You only have two options. You can either make it flat, the whole object, or smooth. Now, in edit mode, you can. Um, select only those things you want to make flat and the other way around if you know what I mean so for example let's just select this part with um, shift um, you can select it this way with um, with alt right click you can select um, um, an edge loop and then um, keep alt clicked and also um, press on shift and now you can actually select several edge loops and therefore select um, a couple of faces and now let's set them to flat. Now you can see the majority of the faces are rendered uh, are shaded in a smooth way, except for those that we just changed. They are shaded in a flat fashion. This is pretty cool. Um, you usually don't use this. I mean, seriously. However, just now that it is here, you could probably get away using this for an artistic um, effect or something. Yeah. And you can also set it smooth again if you select everything. Cool. Now, repeat last is the exact same thing as it is in object mode. It just does your last thing over and over again. Now, in our case, you can see select or deselect all was the last thing we did. So if we repeat last, it will just select or deselect. Or in a, to put it another way, it will just press the button A, so to say, numerous times. But you can also use history and do something again from the past, for example. Um, loop select. Nothing happens. That's just great. Okay, let's select this loop. Now let's repeat last. Nothing happens. Okay, it doesn't always really work the way you, you think it does. Um, but for example, if you take the whole thing and you move it over here, and now if you press repeat last, it does that over and over again. Okay, now we've already covered the grease pencil feature. It's the exact same thing as before. Okay, and um, now let's just close this uh, second sub window like this. And now let's just um, look at the last option we have here mesh options. Now, those are also a bit complicated to explain, at least to explain all of them. Let's reposition our cursor. Let's add a UV sphere. Let's go into edit mode. And now 
let's just um, enable X mirror. And now if you manipulate one of those edges, you can see the uh, corresponding edge, so to say, is on the other side along the x-axis will also be moved in the same way. And this is pretty f handy to um, work fast, but if you want to make a symmetrical model, of course. And it works just great. And now topology mirror. Um, now this is something you can activate. For example, if you have, let's just turn this off. Let's just take those vertices and let's just move them out here. Okay, like this. Now, in this case, um, the topology from the left to the right side is different. However, there are the same amount of vertices and therefore it is in some way um, similar. So, usually sh you should get away with um, checking topology mirror and now you should be able to move this vertex and this vertex at the same time. At least that's, that's my understanding. However, um, it doesn't really work all the time. For example, here it doesn't work at all. I'm not sure why that is. It does work on one of my other models. Um, I'm going to show you that in a second. Um, but yeah. And now this edge select mode. This is also a very handy trick. Let's just unselect those things. And let's just go to um, solid view. And let's also disable this limit selection to visible. Or let's enable it actually. I'm never sure which is which. Anyway, with Tag Sharp you can actually um, very easily create seams and creases and stuff like that. Now I'm going to show you what those things are in a later tutorial, but I'm just going to show you how to use them with this thing. Now you already know the seams, so let's take the seam as the example. Now let's say you want to uh, mark a seam that goes from here to here and then, I don't know, to over here or whatever. You can just control click on one of those edges and you can see it already calculated um, all the, the whole seam from over here to over here. And I can just say I want this thing as a, has a seam, this one, this one, this one, with control right clicking on those edges. And this is just amazing how easily you can actually create a seam this way. Yeah, um, perfect. Same goes for creases. Um, and by the way, what creases are, we're going to take a look at creases in the next tutorial, actually. Um, but let me just show you, show you real quick, just right now. Now let's... Actually, I cannot show you because we didn't yet cover the modifiers. Okay, let's leave this um, open for another tutorial. It isn't very difficult and um, it isn't also not that important right now. So, um, is there anything else? No, I think that's more or less it. Now let me just real quick show you what I talked about just now about this other model of mine and about the topology mirror. Um, let's go to, let's see. Where is it? Over here. Here we go. And let's just open <laughs> this file. Okay, let's just hide all those. We don't need to see them right now. Okay, now let's go to front view. Let's scroll in a little bit. Okay, this is not a very cool expression here. Let me just undo that. Okay, and also... I'm going to show you more about those things in a later tutorial as well. And now if you if we select the head model and if you tap into edit mode, um, we also need to get back to basis here. And uh, I'm just um, like tr throwing a lot of new stuff at you. So don't worry about those things just now. It is just for um, presentation purposes so I can show you what this topology mirror does. Now if you grab this vertex and if just X mirror is selected, um, like this. You can see it also pretty well deforms the vertex on the other side, on the other cheek. However, now let's just disable X mirror for once and let's move this one over here. 
And now if we check Xmirror, the one on the other side is no longer deformed because it is not on the exact same position as this one on the other side. So, but now if we um, hit Topology Mirror, actually it does what it's supposed to. And the other um, vertex automatically snaps into the same position as this one. And that is pretty cool. And as you saw, it did not work with the sphere. I don't know why that is. Um, I do know, however, that there have been other people who had issues with that. So, yeah, I'm um, just... Now you know how it works, and that's just that's just great. Okay, um, we can close this file again. Oh, by the way, one other thing to note, as you were able to see just now, Blender does not ask you if you want to save when you close a file, okay? So if you want to save it, make sure you do that before closing the file. Or um, also a very good way is to um, get used to always saving your file whenever you make a render or whenever you do something else so you save on a uh, regular uh, basis so to say i'm not sure if you can say that anyway um that's basically it um thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it if you have any kinds of questions or comments post them in the uh, comment section below the video um yeah thank you for watching and see you next time